So, I need a couple definitions. For those definitions, I need a motivating pair of examples. So here are my kind of motivating examples. Uh, I remember this matrix, the 0, 1, 0, 0 matrix, as having some, like, that eigenvalue vector frickin' problem nonsense, right? I also remember the identity matrix being a little weird. You guys with me on that? And what the hell, since we're on the topic, let's add the zero matrix here. You guys with me? These seem to seem like they have problems, right? These are things that act weird, so let's sort it out. Um, for this one, the identity matrix, what are the eigenvalues? Negative one and negative one. Close. Not negative, though. Yeah, they're one and one. See that? Oh, wait. The identity matrix, right, takes every vector to itself. Mm -hmm. And so every vector in R2 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue one. You guys all see that? So if I'm saying, all right, lambdas one and one, let me write down that characteristic polynomial, right? So the determinant of a minus lambda i, right, is 1 minus lambda squared equals 0. Right, so this is what's called a characteristic equation. It's the determinant of a minus lambda i. Pretty on board with that. Notice 1 solves this equation twice. You guys see why I'm saying it's twice? There twice. Yeah, because I have kind of a zero product rule going on, right? And this number appears twice in the solutions to that zero product rule. You guys all with me on that? This is what's called the algebraic multiplicity. So lambda equals one has algebraic multiplicity 2. Just with me on that? In the algebra, it shows up twice. Good? Okay. Lambda equals 1 has geometric multiplicity. And here's where I need you to remember a thing. So I'm leaving a little blank here that I want you to think about for a hot second. The way I'm going to think about that geometric multiplicity is I'm going to consider the dimension of the null space of A minus lambda i. So if you set lambda equal to 1 and consider, in this case, my matrix A, right? So what's the matrix I'm talking about? Oh, A minus lambda i. Yeah, so I'm talking about A minus so lambda case, i. Yeah, so in this case, this A minus lambda i is the 2 by 2 zero matrix, right? Which is all, the dimension of it is all the way The dimension of the null space is 2, and the null space itself is all of R2. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, lambda equals 1 has geometric multiplicity 2. You guys with me on that? Mm -hmm. The fact that these two numbers are the same means that my life is going to be okay with this one because I can produce linearly independent eigenpairs. You guys see that? So my eigenpairs for this matrix are going to be 1, comma, and 1, comma. Yeah, and these can be basically anything, right? So I'm going to pick them the easy way. I'm going to pick them as I and J. You guys with 
feeling it? Ready on board? Okay. Let's go look at the zero matrix. How does this conversation change for the zero matrix? Good. So I'm thinking about my characteristic equation over here, right? Is 0 minus lambda squared minus 0 equals 0, right? Okay, so my characteristic equation boils down to lambda squared equals 0. You guys see that? So if you solve that, you get lambda is 0 and 0. Board. What does that mean about the algebraic multiplicity? Good. So if that has algebraic multiplicity two. Is with me? What's the geometric multiplicity? So what's the dimension of the null space of the zero matrix? R two. In this case, it's two. Right, because the null space is all of R2. What does this thing map to zero? This thing maps everything, every two-dimensional vector to zero. And so I can find a basis for the null space that's got two things in it. Okay, see that? So the geometric multiplicity for this is also two. Guess what panel? So I can find some eigenpairs. My eigenpairs are, say, 0 and i and 0 and j. Is with me? This conversation was boring because this matrix and that one differ by a multiple of the identity matrix. You guys see that? This was roughly the same conversation because all I did was subtract something from the diagonal, which is only going to move the eigenvalues, the eigenvectors instead. So. Good with that? Okay. In these two cases, I can't diagonalize. That is hella boring in these two cases because these two matrices are already diagonal. See that? So my diagonalization matrices are the identity and the identity's inverse. Who cares? None of this was a problem. Is on board with these two? Okay. Let's see the uh, slightly weirdness. So if I look at the matrix 0, 1, 0, 0, I'm writing down the characteristic equation, right? So the characteristic equation is going to be minus lambda. I have a minus lambda and a minus lambda, right? So I'm going to have minus lambda squared minus zero. Minus zero. The <laughs> that looks familiar, right? Okay. So, okay. All right. It's not broken yet. So, stop panicking. Yeah. Uh, so the algebraic multiplicity of, oops, I guess I didn't write down the answer. I should probably write down the answer somewhere. So lambda equals zero, right? Yeah. Algebraic multiplicity of two. two. Okay, so that leaves me. Let's see, I need to know the geometric multiplicity of lambda equals zero for this matrix zero, one, zero, zero, right? That's what I'm after. And the way I do that is I need to find, right, i.e., find the dimension of the null space of zero, one, zero, zero minus Zero times the identity matrix. Uh, right? Yeah, it's just one. So this stuff? 
Wait, wait, wait. Or the dimension is uh, one. Careful, careful. Oh, yeah. Tell me this stuff first. Oh, that's just equal to zero, one, zero, zero. Yeah, that's the same matrix, right? That's zero, one, zero, zero? Yeah. Okay, so I need to take the matrix zero, one, zero, zero, augment by the zero factor, and find the solutions to this, right? You guys see that? Uh, this just says y is zero, right? Yeah, excellent. There's a pivot here. So there's only one free variable. You guys see that? So then so the null space of the matrix that I started with, right? is the span of the span of the set of vectors 1 0 Is that right? fuck just happened? So there's one factor in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So a basis for the null space has only one factor in it, because there's only one free variable. That all makes sense to me, right? If I wrote down the four subspaces theorem, right, and look at that matrix, that has one linearly independent column, right? So the rank is one, so the null space has to be one-dimensional. You guys see that I went a little overboard solving for what the null space was. Yeah. I really could have just said, oh, well, the rank is one, and so it's one-dimensional. Ergo, the geometric multiplicity of lambda equals zero is one. What does that mean? What's your eigenpair? Where's your eigenpairs? I should be able to come up with two eigenpairs, right? <laughs> two by two matrix, two eigenpairs. Don't tell me it's different. Right? Well, you're listing yeah, at the same one time. Are they really different then? It's a good good idea. What's one of them? What's one eigenpair? One zero. Zero. Good. It's the oh, yeah. eigenvalue yeah. is zero <laughs> and the eigenvector that goes with it is one zero, right? Yeah, my bad. <laughs> but You guys see that? There isn't another one. There just isn't one. There's nothing you can do to fix this. This just is the way it is. Pain in the ass. That's stupid. Dumb. This is maybe good proof that, I don't know, this is good proof that the universe hates us. Like, this should just work. The algebraic multiplicity and the geometric multiplicity should be the same. No, it's proof that it's neutral, because it works for those two. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So, it sometimes works, it sometimes doesn't. Um, in this case, right, the consequence of having a mismatched algebraic and geometric multiplicity, the consequence is, I won't be able to diagonalize this matrix. Just can't do it. Not with this equipment. Maybe if we got better equipment. Maybe if we learn more and think harder about this, we have half a chance. But this thing ain't going to work as it seems. I have another question. If we, uh, if we don't lose Hermits, and if we scale this up to 3x3... Three three, uh, so, to a 3x3, three three, so we have a cubic. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for the geometric multiplicity? Since if you say, let's say you could do it like x minus 1 squared times x plus 2. That's like an example. 
So what would that do for the geometric density? It depends on the matrix. So, okay. generally, right? Yeah. If you have a matrix that's, say, n by n, right? Yeah. My hope, right, is that when I do the determinant of a minus lambda i, A minus lambda i, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't hope, sorry. So, when I consider the determinant of A minus lambda i and set this equal to zero, right? This thing, the determinant of A minus lambda i, is a polynomial of what degree? So there's a degree n polynomial. Now, what that means is that the multiplicity of each eigenvector, or each, sorry, the multiplicity of each eigenvalue, right? Yes. Will be between 1 and n. Okay, see that? So, what that means is that I might get lucky and have n different eigenvalues, and then the eigenvectors will be linearly independent for this. Great. Right, if they all have algebraic multiplicity one, then they all necessarily have geometric multiplicity one. The weirdness comes in when you have things, when you have eigenvalues of multiplicity more than one. Yeah, that was so true. if you have a repeated eigenvalue, right, it has some algebraic multiplicity. It has to be smaller than, or at least equal to m, right? Okay, see that? You can't zero out the polynomial more times than the polynomial can have zeros. Right. That's kind of the, this is what's called the fundamental theorem of algebra, that a polynomial of degree n has at most n zeros. If you count them with multiplicity, it has exactly n zeros. As long as you're willing to admit the complex numbers into your life. Which at this point you're going to have to. Sorry. Dang. That's awesome. You guys good with that? Yeah. So, this thing has at most n zeros. And we'll just forget the at most and we'll write with multiplicity as n zeros. Right? And then the trouble that we'll run into is if we have somewhere that algebraic multiplicity is more than one, the geometric multiplicity might not match. There's nothing we can do about that. It might just happen. You guys cool that? A, an example of a matrix like that would be this one. When you multiply this by a vector x, y, z, right, this thing moves everything up by one and drops the x component, right? Like thinking about this tape-wise, this gives you the vector y, z, zero. This is going to have a very similar behavior to the one we just talked about in two dimensions. It's going to act a lot like this one because this one does the same thing. Yeah. This moves x, y to y in zero. So it scoots the tape up one and drops the, the thing that falls off. Good with that? So these can exist in arbitrary dimensions. They can be very frustrating. So just know that this mismatch can exist. This is where I was advertising there can be problems in differential equations. This is the problems. There's a way to fix this in DE's land, which we'll get to at the good with us? Yeah.